that was our cue, and uh, we're going to get started with um, a budget budget discussion uh, for uh, those of you who are in here and for our, our live stream. Let me inform you that uh, upon legal advice, I want to let you know, we, due to unforeseen circumstances, we only have two council members and myself, as you can tell. Uh, therefore, this is not a meeting. This is not an official meeting. It will not take minutes. We will not, it will not have the characteristics of a regular uh, public announced meeting. However, it was a scheduled uh, meeting, so we are going to take advantage of the time, and we're going to have what is essentially a discussion between department heads or, or the town manager and members of council and mayor who are present. And I'm now going to make sure that what I just described is accurate enough. That is correct. Okay. So we will start um, at, where do you want? Well, I'll just do a brief overview, uh, and then we will go down the line on the uh, tabs in the budget workbook. Okay. Um, so to give you all an overview, uh, and I sent you a memo last week, and some of these numbers have changed. Um, you have in front of you a general fund requested budget of $11,446,684.77 against anticipated revenues of $10,361,673, which represents a deficit of $1,085,011.77. The deficit figure will be carried over from reserves to balance the budget. As of its last uh, audit, the town had 15 and a half months approximately in reserves, which amounts to 8,283,898. It's a very healthy number. Um, given our stated policy to maintain a, a minimum six months in reserve, it's prudent to utilize these additional available funds to accomplish project and maintenance goals. And our general fund proposal also includes a 4% COLA increase for the town's employees. The total proposed budget uh, for the town's other funds, such as sewer, ARPA, confiscated assets, and SPLOST, totals 8297436662 against anticipated revenues of 7484879.51, which represents a deficit of 812,557.11. This deficit will also be carried over from reserves to balance the budget. Most of this deficit, 784,891.13, uh, is contained within the sewer enterprise fund and includes necessary manhole and pipe repairs amounting to $430,650 and requests for pipe cameras and other maintenance equipment amounting to $178,200. Some of these costs may be partially covered by ARPA funding in a mid-year budget amendment. And just touching on that real quick, once the, the official budget is adopted in June, staff is going to get together and we're going to do another uh, budget for ARPA, which is just going to look a lot like our CIP budget. It's going to have a uh, several years to it because we have to have the money committed by 24 and spent by 26. So we're going to come back to you in, later in the summer with a, with a new ARPA budget, and we'll have you do an amendment. Um, I want to address the, the aforementioned deficits by reminding you that many of the projects listed, such as the Pendleton Dam, for example, may be started in the next fiscal year, but not completed. As a result, it's likely that the town would realize a much lower deficit than anticipated or no deficit at all. It's rare for us to go over budget in any given budget year. Speaking of unfinished projects, <clears throat> it's important to note that some of the fiscal year 23 budget requests includes carryover amounts from the current budget due to projects that staff was not able to see completed this fiscal year. For example, we, have, we were approved for $150,000 in the current budget from CARES Act's funding to complete the Shamrock Playground renovation. This project was put out for bid and a vendor was approved in the current fiscal year, but the project will not be completed until fiscal year 23. Uh, this is due to supply chain issues. Since we cannot pay for the project until it's completed, the funds have to be carried over. We also have ongoing public works items such as road projects and the chipper that have not been completed or delivered and will, will have to be carried over. Again, much of these issues can be attributed to the global supply chain and workforce issues. Other items of note include $2 million for Pendleton Dam. Uh, of course, we're still waiting on uh, word from FEMA on whether or not we're getting that grant. If we get the grant, of which I anticipate that we will, 
that will pay for 75% of that cost. So that $2 million that we have in the budget for the last couple of years will be, uh, will only be 500,000 will be what our actual cost will be. Uh, there's 465,500 in our budget for the Castlewood Dam project. And as you know, that's contingent upon them getting their grant. Um, and that is a pass-through amount. So we're showing it on the revenues and we're showing it on the expense. Um, so that inflates our budget as well. We have 4,203,741.36 in SPLOST funded projects. So of course that does not affect our general fund. Um, these projects include Elmig supplements, the Spencer Lane to Winfield cart path extension, the Palmetto Arrowwood roundabout, Hanley Park restrooms, renovations at Redwine, a culvert replacement on Pendleton Trail, facility improvements at 881, and GTIP debt service patrol vehicles and streetscape improvements. So there's a lot uh, going on uh, this coming year. Fayette County anticipates a 16 and a quarter percent increase in property tax revenues from fiscal year 23, which would result in an additional 237,238.45 uh, from that source of revenue. But Sandy used a more conservative 15% because um, we anticipate uh, property owners appealing their assessments. Um, and that could, of course, result in lower revenues than anticipated. So that's an overview. I know that uh, it's a it's a big budget. Uh, I don't, you know, I know there's probably some sticker shock there, but um, like I said, a lot of this is attributed to, you know, Splost, the dam, and some of these other big items that we're uh, we're having to uh, work on. So, if there are no initial questions, we can get started with. Uh, I'll let Sandy get started on uh, just an overview of the, the roll-ups and the revenue. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry, Sandy. One, one thing. Um, the actual numbers I, uh, that I gave you this morning that I, that I said in my, my opening, those numbers are correct. Um, they're a little bit higher than the last version you got. Uh, 10,000 and some change of that. We got a last minute request from, uh, from Mitch and Public Works to uh, this in the next budget year promotes uh, the two new guys to maintenance worker two. They were hired in at maintenance worker one last year. They've done phenomenal work. We're very glad to have them. I mean, they, they hit it out of the park when they hired those two guys. Um, and so their one year is, is, uh, in August, so we would like to, uh, we wanted to put that in the budget and, and uh, honor that request so that uh, later this year we can, we can get that. Sorry, Sandy, I just forgot that part. <clears throat> okay, so um, Brandon's kind of already gone over the, um, the numbers on the roll-ups. Um, there's two different tabs. The first tab is just for general fund alone um, and all of the departments that roll up into the general fund. Um, so basically we're going to go through um, we're going to go through each department tab by tab. Um, so if you don't have any questions on the roll up, I suggest we move on. Okay. You want to talk revenue first? Yes. <clears throat> Okay, on the revenue, as um, Brandon said, I'm sorry. Okay. That's not revenue. There we go. There we go. Wow. Okay, <clears throat> um, as Brandon said, I did a conservative 15% um, for the real property um, as far as, as putting in a, an amount. So, um, it's very possible that we could get more than that, um, but I went on ahead and put that in um, at $1.5 million. Um, and most of the revenue, I looked at what I knew um, as far as what's going on. Um, I kind of looked at what's happened in the past, and uh, I've just kind of put the numbers down. I'm assuming you don't want to go line by line. How do you want to do this? I don't have a need to and I, but I defer to but I will if you want okay.
Um, so let me just see if I can hit on some of the big ones, um, if you want, or if you want to just skip to the next. Use your judgment, whatever you want. I mean, I'll give you as much detail as you want, or well, well, if you well, guys feel comfortable, we can move if on. If somebody up here asks you for that more detail, we, we will, but it, you just default to okay. your judgment. I trust that. Okay. Um, so in that case, I there's no questions right now, and we can always come back to it if we need to as well, but um, I, I don't think that we'll um, go on ahead and look at that part. We can move on to admin. So, Mr. Mayor, I need to point out now that we have a quorum. So, probably need to call the meeting to order. Right. We will uh, we'll, we'll now call the meeting to order, and I'm going to stall a little bit for for D to come up and take minutes. <clears throat> Anybody want to sing to us? Okay. All right. As soon as she's ready, I'll move on to admin. Go ahead. Okay. We are recording, so you should be good. Okay. Um, there are no major changes in admin. Um, that, you know, to speak of, we did increase a little bit on technical services uh, for uh, IT items and things of that nature. Um, I increased a little bit in training, I believe. Uh, and really, that's that's about it. My, my, the admin budget is, is uh, pretty unremarkable. Um, we did decrease the mayor and council uh, Line item from fourteen thousand to ten thousand. That's just based on uh, that's what we use for you guys to go to training and incidentals and things of that nature. Um, uh, let's see. That I didn't I didn't do any notes on mine because, like I said, there's there's no major uh, increases in my government. Or my go I'm just looking at a line item. I'm sorry. Uh, in my budget, there are no questions. We can move on to finance. Sorry, since, yes, since we have a quorum, can we approve the agenda? Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. Uh, I'm just <laughs> oh, really? Ooh, howdy. Uh, okay. So, uh, since we have a quorum and the board uh, meeting is being called to order, uh, we want to now uh, make uh, entertain a motion to approve the agenda. I, I have a motion. Do I have a second? Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Uh, is there anything else that we need to do now that we have a meeting? Be good now. Madam Clerk? Manager? All right. Okay. The floor is yours. All right. Um, so my budget actually decreased from 1131992 to 1000000 I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm looking at the <laughs> looking at the year to date. So we increased from uh one million one thirty one nine ninety two fifty eight to one million one sixty two one sixty one thirty one. That's an increase. That's what I said. Oh. She corrected me. I'm oh, sorry. Okay. I was looking at the uh the year to date um line. I have I have not finished my coffee this morning, sir. I apologize. Uh if there are no questions on at on admin, um we can move to finance. Okay, um, for finance, one of the increases that we had was for um, the auditing services. Because we've received a bunch of government, uh, federal government money for ARPA, um, we have to have a single audit. And so I have had to, that's an extra audit that the auditors will have to do, and it will cost us extra money. So therefore, I had to put more money into the budget. So just be prepared um, that at the end of the year, we will have two different audits. Just, go ahead. I want to ask a question just about formatting and what we're looking at. Uh, if you could scroll up a second, please. Right, right there. Uh, is there a way to have those categories scroll up it. there at all times? There is. I don't know how to do that. For, but uh, there is for, a way to do it. Okay. For another meeting, if we could, so yeah. that when we're viewing it. I can fix it, it real fast if you want it. Um, oh, I'm sorry. I, no, I just. No, so you want just the, uh, so that the, 
So the, that this scroll the headings, Joe. Yeah, the yeah. heading may is uh, consistent, so that when we're looking at a, at a number, we know what number we're looking at. There you go. Perfect. Nice. I learned something. Oh. I'll probably have to. I'll probably have to do that on every tab. But. Okay. okay. Go ahead. Okay. Mr. Campbell, hold on. Uh, no, no, no. Oh, sorry. Oh, yeah. Sandy, the audit. Go, I'm go sorry. Ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> the audit that you're referring to, and that was for ARPA, correct? Yes. Were we able to take that fee out of the ARPA funds? Yes, we can. Okay. That's that that was the do. point I was going to try to make. No, it's fine. I, I have it in the general fund as far as the budget goes, but we haven't done the ARPA budget yet, so we can move it at that point if you want. Um, <clears throat> okay, so that's that. Um, then mainly everything else um, up at the top is pretty much uh, standard stuff that we normally have. Um, and the, the dues and fees, we just, we're in different organizations for HR and finance. Um, although the HR stuff is actually out of the admin budget. Um, let's see. Then we have, I put in some money for um, a possible um, accounts payable printer. I have been using that printer since 2009. I keep expecting it to break. One of these days it will. <laughs> so every year I just kind of put it in there because if it breaks, obviously I'm going to have to have a new one in order to print the accounts payable checks. Um, and then I put in some extra money. Um, my computer's getting old, so I'm going to limp it along as long as I can. But just in case it goes bad. Um, so I have money in there for that. Uh, and then the big one at the bottom and the capital outlay. Um, we had put in $30,000 for some budget software last year. Uh, we did not have a chance to get the RFP out in order to get some budget software. We still want to do that this year um, for next year's budget. That'll help everybody, um, all of the departments. And it's not, then it wouldn't be done on this Excel spreadsheet where it's all linked together. Um, it would make it much easier. And I um, increased it to 35000 mainly because prices are going up. And I'm not sure that we can get what we need for 30000 anymore this year. Questions, we can move on to the next one. Okay. We'll move on to municipal court. Good morning. Good morning. Um, I am just going to briefly kind of go over some of the highlights um, as everyone else has done. Um, the, the major changes that I made are um, the solicitor and the judge, I gave them a 5% raise. They've been doing a phenomenal job being leaders in our court and being exemplary, and I feel like they, involved, they, they deserve the 5% um, increase. Um, on our public defender services, for well, the last two years of having COVID, we've not had as much in-person court, and so we've not had as many people needing the indigent defense. So I went ahead and added a couple extra cases in there just in case we needed more public defender services to cover that cost. And then um, on the other ones, such as like interpreter services and drug testing and printing of forms, I added like $100 here and there just to cover the cost of inflation. <laughs> um, but other than that, everything else is pretty pretty normal pretty standard. Um, feel free to ask if you have any questions. There's nothing in your budget that is adjusted for the degree of inflation that we're experiencing? Yes, I did. I did increase like the um, like for um, travel for um, education for all the GRA, the Georgia Tech Association. I increased those because the, the, the dues have increased the printing of forms and stuff, I increased my line item by $100 because the price is going up and paper's getting hard to get. <laughs> um, so yes, I did I did take that in consideration in each line item. Yes. On to the museum. Uh, we in, go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna say, uh, on the museum, uh, mainly since we've already paid out um, their seed money, Mainly what's in the museum is 
stuff like the utilities and stuff that it costs to keep 881 going um, and some $10,000 for just building maintenance, general stuff to keep the building looking nice, running. And there will be additional in the FOSS budget for a complete renovation of the restrooms and paint and flooring and some co other cosmetic work um, in anticipation of moving recreation offices there. On to parks and recreation. Good morning. Our budget really has not changed much um, for this FY. Um, we've adjusted, as April said, I believe in education and travel, as well as in technical services due to inflation. Technical services is a lot of our DJs and things like that. Their travel fees increased, so their bill to us has increased. So we just looked at what we were spending this year and upped it by, I think, about $200, if I'm correct. Um, other than that, we really don't have anything big going on with our budget, unlike last year. Take a line item you want me to display for you? Let's see if we'll go down just a little bit, a little bit more. We're going to go down to um, a little bit more, down to the, uh, there we go. Uh, for holiday decorations, we're keeping it the same. For our special program supplies, uh, we're also Again, keeping that the same. I uh, don't have anything for small equipment, uh, though we do like to keep some money in there just in case something pops up, something breaks. Um, if you'll go down just a bit further. A um, little, little bit more for me, please. There we go. Um, with our other supplies, we're going to keep it about the same. Really, it's the only adjustments we've made are for inflation just the added cost of our vendors coming to us and them passing that cost on to us. As Brandon already mentioned, um, the playground at Shamrock Park, you know, that was budgeted and will be completed this year. We're very excited about that. Um, and I think that's about it. Like I said, my budget isn't very exciting this year. It's sure it is. staying the course. <laughs> what was the 28th for in the last budget? I can answer that. She probably doesn't know. <laughs> oh, no. it's It was for the uh, playground, the 28th. No, actually, or? it's not. Okay, it never is, mind. It, um, it's for the, to cover the funds from Founders Day, yes. where we don't have enough money coming in to okay. cover Founders Day. So that is the over above, um, the overage That's for Founders Day. That's why it doesn't Day. appear in the, the <coughs> current or requested budget. Okay. Right. 150000 for that's the carryover for the uh, Shamrock Park playground. Mm -hmm. So it was ordered in this fiscal year and approved in this fiscal year, but because it won't be delivered until July, it'll be, we have to carry those funds to the next fiscal year. Um, the, if you go back up to the <coughs> holiday decorations, mm -hmm. I know at one time we believe we approved or voted I know we discussed in a public meeting, but I believe we voted to extend the, the lighting that goes along the, the utility line in front of Shamrock mm -hmm. Park. And, and we have looked at that, mm -hmm. Public Works and I have talked to that about that in, in several meetings. And the, the pause there is that once you get a little bit, once you get to the police department, the, the line crosses the road. Right. And so, the discussion has been, it's kind of difficult to, to accomplish what you're looking for as we're set up right now. Okay. Um, and so we're still looking at that. It's still something that we know that you guys want. It's mm -hmm. on our radar. Um, it's just uh, extending it much further. You're going to wind up crossing the road, and that's fine, but I don't think it's the the uh, the look you were going yeah. for. Yeah. Well, and I think it, admittedly, at least for me and possibly for others who supported it, that it was not something that we were saying this needs to be done it, uh, right. like we were mandating it it was more can we explore this and mm -hmm. see if it can be done so right. i personally understand what you're saying we spent very little last year on decorations right is that 
what that thousand and sixty two dollars is? Yes, ma'am. I'd like to see us do more. And you know, instead of having the committee we had, because we kind of got nowhere with that committee, mm -hmm. there is a committee among the people here. That's fine. That's how however y'all want to do it. I mean, you know, these people have good ideas, I'm sure. They do. And, you know, we, we started the Christmas committee because we had so much negative public feedback. We wanted yeah. the public to have an opportunity to give us feedback. And, of course, as usual, when you give the opportunity, very few people want to take that opportunity. Or when they do, it's for one year. go for a while. Mm -hmm. It's good for a year. And then, you know, Jennifer was leading it up, and then she started an, another location for her store, and she got busy. And, you know, so they, they, they tried. Mm -hmm. And it, it's very hard to keep these committees going. So... Uh, this year, yes, we can kick off something internally, um, get some employee volunteers that are good, have a good eye for that kind of thing, and we can go from there. Rebecca, before you leave that, I have something on my desk. It's actually a, a box uh, that came yesterday. It is a box of catalogs of Christmas decorations. Perfect, because we've been talking so. to one that works with um, Coweta EMC as well, just to, they're, fortunately, they, um, the gentleman who does it, Chris, he's friends with uh, Linda's daughter. And he was able to come down and give us a few ideas for free. So we're looking at that as well, just trying to come up with ideas, things that we could present to, to y'all and hopefully an internal committee and say, you know, here's some ideas of what we can do with this big space. Okay. So if y'all are willing to increase it, I am happy with that. If y'all are willing to give me more money, I'm so happy with that. To that point, if, when you consider our budget, the magnitude of our budget, and then you consider in in my personal opinion, how important Christmas decorations are. We're talking about six thousand on a multi multi million dollar budget. Yeah. Um, no, I've been listening. Uh, uh, I personally think that if you're talking about six thousand dollars in that big of a budget. You're, you're really not doing justice to the need for Christmas decorations. I, I, that's my humble but accurate opinion. Like I said, if y'all are willing to give us more money, I am happy. I am happy with that. I will always take more money. Did y'all hear me? I said humble but accurate opinion. I'll <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I, I let council speak from there. I don't know how y'all feel about expanding the budget on Christmas decorations. I totally agree. I also want to ask, how are the applications for the Christmas trees coming in? They're going well. I believe right now we have close to 20 applications, and uh, we're going to send out another email blast since we were planning to do it on June 25th since it's, you know, six months away from Christmas, and we're going to send out another blast, and I think that's when we'll really start seeing the rest of the businesses who haven't come in yet start coming in, but we've received a really good response so far. All the electrical needs for that are... We talked about that with Brandon and with Public Works. We would probably look at, because we don't have hookups to that far out, we would like to, you know, spread them out. We don't want them clumped all together in one spot or with a, or with a bunch of cords. So we were thinking about telling our vendors possibly have the solar lights that you can purchase that are the regular Christmas lights, but they have the solar panel and you can set a timer on them so you don't waste the energy. They look really nice. We're looking into possibly telling our vendors to go with something like that. Um, of course, for the ones that we could put by power boxes, we're more than happy to sit them out there with a timer. Um, that way, when it turns dark, they turn on and when it's in the morning, they automatically turn off. There's also the uh, battery pack mm -hmm. powered LEDs that they last forever. I mean, I've, I've seen people that use them for Christmas decorations at their homes, and they last the whole season. I use them everywhere over my home because it's a cheap alternative to my husband likes them. It lowers the electricity bill. All right, so back to the decoration budget, uh, the 6000 Do uh, Is there a proposal or recommendation on what, what that should be set at? Um, is there a recommendation from you on what you think would be the right number, or do y'all want to come talk about it and come back to us? And from what I've seen to really, really do up the town, it might be up to 20000 but I think it would be a good idea to get together as a group and look at these different, like try to pinpoint what we want. 
And that way, 20,000 may not be enough, or it may be way too much. I think it's might not still be enough to do the entire town the way that we want to. But 20,000, what, what are you including in that? Well, we need to replace all of our, um, I have my brain, I haven't finished my coffee either. We need to replace all of our uh, power line decorations that with the tinsel, a lot of them are starting to come off. We would, we've talked before the Christmas committee doing some really pretty wreaths that actually light up that we can do. Um, we've also talked about in Shamrock Park, we would like to see something really big out there, not just the beautiful Christmas trees that the businesses are doing, but something, some sort of um, display, something out there, because it's such a big, beautiful centerpiece park. And we would love to see something out there um, that really ties everything together. I also think that we need to do some more decorations on the outside of the town hall. And as I have discussed with several of these companies, greenery is the most expensive thing. If you want to do um, lights and things like that, it's a lot cheaper. But people are very proud of their greenery. And it is very, very expensive. You can spend 3000 easily on just garland. Just garland for town hall. It's I very like greenery, expensive. greenery, but it doesn't show up at night, and at night is when you want the lights and you want to see something because the, the greenery we put at town hall, those little dinky lights didn't do anything for it. So I would love to like, see when you drive down the main street, see it lit up with all the beautiful Christmas lights. I think uh, Hampton does a very good job of that. Barnesville does a very good job of that. Um, I would love to see a lot more lights, trees wrapped in lights. Maybe um, there's a church in Griffin that has a big, beautiful lake, much like we do, and they have um, light-up Christmas trees that sit sporadically throughout the lake and surround their fountain, and it's really beautiful at night, and the church is lit up. It's gorgeous. I would really like to see some more stuff like that. How would affect going to be able to put more electrical outlets in, like on the poles and things that we can use? I know that with the black lamp posts, we encountered some issues with that before. With the regular power lines, there's not much of an issue, but with those, you know, that's another thing to put into the budget as well is, you know, the fees for getting them to go and do that. The, the, the decorative poles that we have in town, what, what EMC told us was that Cutting into the pole to install the plugs would would affect the integrity of the pole. Uh, putting power on the uh, the big wooden poles is no problem. Mm -hmm. So if we wanted power at the decorative poles, the idea there was to uh, the box would be at ground level, and that's fine. But the only issue there is the extension cord. The cord, you're going to see the cord. And that's where, so. like I said, we both you and I discussed an idea would be to take greenery and, and yeah. try to hide it. Um, but, you know, you don't want that dinky dollar store greenery or the Hobby Lobby greenery. It's going to have to be something that's nice because we don't want it to look bad. Well, couldn't you use those battery-operated packs on those? You could. You could. It's, and, and, I mean, they're, they're getting better and better with that kind of stuff. It would um, then be on Public Works to maintain them. And I mean, if you had the if you had a higher quality LED light system with a battery pack, with which a, they sell, with a, the company sell with a photo cell or a timer, where they only came on at night and went off at dawn, then that would your your batteries may last you all season. Mm -hmm. So that's I mean, there's a, there's a give and take for both ways of doing it. I mean, it's very expensive to run power. Um, up front, the cost to uh, buy these lights might be high but you don't have a, a, as high of an ongoing cost. Because when you run power, then there's also a monthly cost involved as well. So, But see, that ongoing cost is like $1,000 last year was not much. No, and, and, and we, we just Right, we, didn't just, we only spent $1,000 because, you know, the, the Christmas committee was not active. And, right. Yeah, so what, what I would suggest, no matter how much you put in the budget, is that, we need to start planning for whatever we do today because supply chain and all that, mm -hmm. I mean, it, it needs to be, uh, we need to start those discussions as soon as possible. So don't guarantee that you're going to no. get it. No, no, sadly. But at least maybe we would have it by next year then. And like I said before, with when the Christmas committee fell like, kind of through, Linda and I definitely don't want to make decisions on the Christmas decorations for the whole town ourselves. No, it shouldn't fall completely on them either. So 
so what do y'all think about 12,000 for the budget? Is that fair? Good start. It's Is a that good fair? start. Because you can't do everything in one year. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're gonna have to grow into it and whatever you can get for that, leading towards whatever program that you have in mind or the committee mm -hmm. has in mind, um, I think it would be a good start. Hopefully you can get what you can get and if it works, then we can start working, putting in our order earlier than June for for the next for the 2023 Christmas. Like I said, as long as y'all will tell, like we get somebody, um, like y'all said, internally um, to give us guidance to say this is where the town wants to move, we are happy to do it. And like I said, if y'all want to give us more money, we are happy with that. All right, so I'm, I'm here in 12, so why don't we keep the 12 and then y'all still do some planning and if you need it a little higher you can always come back to us and ask us if it can be higher awesome that, thank is that you good? does that require a vote or, or is this since this is just this is just feedback I mean you do have a quorum now but this is right. more of a info session okay and feedback All right. thank you so we will when we come back to you with our budget in, at the public hearing right. it will include that twelve thousand dollar figure for the public to to comment on and then you'll vote on it. That's awesome. Thank you. I have I do have a question regarding the uh, the cross supplies. Mm -hmm. Now you've got two hundred dollars in there. Do we still have is there there's more requests for those at this point in time? Is any we're doing them in batches as Brandon said so that it's manageable with our Boy Scouts and things like that. We're doing it in batches of ten. Right now we have a reserve of ten and we are going to order, we currently have ordered from the troop 20 more. So we'll send out and sell another 10. Um, Is the $200 gonna be enough? Yes, sir. And they also are paying to have these crosses as well. So. I know. All right. Are there any further questions for me? Anyone? Nice to see the crosses up. It is. We're very excited to grow that program. Thank you all. Thank you so much to Mr. Billy and you for all your awesome help. And thank you again for the Christmas committee money. Like I said, if you'll give us more money, we will make good use of it. I get too excited. <laughs> um, all, right. all right. Thank you. Okay, we have uh, next is planning and zoning. All right. We have a couple of couple of changes uh, this year. We um, some of this has to do with the new kind of organizational change that council has decided to make as well. Uh, and the first item that I'd like to kind of point out is uh, part-time employees. Y'all kind of made a motion um, for planning commission to uh, to get a little bit of a bump in pay. Uh, that would put them at uh, $25 a paycheck, uh, $75, or I'm sorry, $75 a month to about $150 a month. Um, so, uh, yeah, I think it's roughly about that much. So that's that's what those numbers will reflect, and I'm sure Planning Commission will be extremely grateful for that. Um, they, uh, I don't think they've gotten a like an increase in pay for probably 25 years. So, <laughs> but that's that's that. Um, Moving down into the next class for purchase and contracted services. The first change is under technical services. So we had 125,000 last year, that was for the LCI. And a lot of that was for us, um, a lot of that was actually counted as revenue because we got compensated, it was an 80-20 split uh, between the town and the Atlanta Regional Commission. But that number has gone down to 65 the proposal for remaining, for having that much remaining in technical services is we as, you know, from a planning perspective, um, we, we're actually moving out of the planning phase and more into the execution phase of, of, of plans. So we, at the, in terms of community development, are going to be pursuing a lot of grants. We're going to be pursuing a lot of opportunities to implement projects. And uh, that money there is for matching grant funds. So if we're able to apply for another, um, another grant that would allow us to do a, either a 50-50 split or 80-20 split, 
it's very difficult to come across 100% grants anymore. Um, and so that number is just to keep some money for potential for matching grant monies. Um, we think 65,000 is, is, is probably a decent amount for us to do a couple of projects that we think, uh, that we think can be done. So some signage improvements, some streetscape improvements, some of those types of things, nothing major that would be like a, a major road improvement or multi-use trail expansion, but it would be enough money for us to kind of make some, some uh, get some grants that could, you know, make some smaller improvements downtown. Um, kind of moving down towards the bottom, some more changes. Uh, nothing else has changed except for travel, education, and training. So uh, this, we included uh, some increases for travel, education, and training for Catherine for code enforcement training and for some planning and zoning training. Uh, also training for myself and uh, CPM training um, is included in that. Um, going down to supplies, we've increased the budget for postage uh, from 250 to 1,000. Um, this helps us accommodate a number of things. Number one, we're sending out, of course, a lot more letters for code enforcement. Um, and our strategy for code enforcement is not to do, not to knock on people's doors or slap notices, but to do a lot of courtesy notifications. We, we send a lot of mail. And so we just wanted to increase the budget to accommodate for, you know, the increased activity associated with uh, code enforcement mailers. Um, we also wanted to leave some room in that budget in case the town wanted to do another townwide blast of some sort, a mailer of some sort. We did that for the comp plan and we did that for the survey, it garnered a lot of success. I would say that that was, that was a successful you know, endeavor. So if there's something else, we on the planning side don't have necessarily a, a giant blast for any new planning activities that are coming up, but if council wishes to have something like that occur in the future, uh, we wanted to make sure that there was the ability uh, for us to, to do another kind of townwide blast for, for whatever was, we think was needed on the community development side. And then, of course, that also encompasses code enforcement, increased mail. Um, small equipment has uh, received a reduction. That number last year was for us to have uh, multiple new computers and different things for the department. We hired Catherine, so we needed computers for her. I think I um, received a new computer uh, and some associated like docs and things. We're not gonna need all of that going into this year, so we left some money in there in case one of our computers dies or breaks, so that allows us to replace that computer. Um, and then other supplies, uh, the, we had an increase in other supplies for um, increased code enforcement potential, added vehicle expenses, things like that, because we're, we're using more vehicles. Um, and we wanted to make sure that we had some of that covered. We're not entirely sure what um, some of these increased costs, where they're going to be. So we just put them in other supplies, but we think we might have, um, we think we might have some of those, those costs kind of occur as they come up, as we're you know, diving into some of these new activities. Um, and then the last one is, uh, capital outlay for uh, vehicle. This would be a shared vehicle with community development and um, uh, Scott uh, and for, for engineering for us to be able to do um, more items to free up the admin car for whoever needs it for admin. So uh, that was just a maximum amount put in there uh, not to exceed, the vehicle would not exceed that amount. What do you need that much for a vehicle? So that's to accommodate for um, the potential to have a, a small SUV uh, or like an, ex like an Explorer type SUV. We currently don't have a vehicle that can actually transport multiple people comfortably. So if we wanted to have, uh, the trucks only really carry two people. Um, and the Fusion can technically, you can squeeze a couple of people, you can squeeze four people in the Fusion. Uh, but if we wanted to have any number of staff, uh, more than two, travel anywhere, perhaps to a training or anything like that, we wanted to make sure that we had a vehicle that could accommodate multiple uh, staff members um, and a, uh, an Explorer or vehicle of that class can carry, um, can carry six comfortably. Uh, that would avoid us having to use multiple vehicles either to go to training or if we uh, wanted to uh, do a site visit somewhere or if a couple of us needed to go uh, to another community or go downtown to Fayetteville uh, or Atlanta for a regional commission meeting. So 
Uh, that's, that's really the maximum amount that we think is appropriate for a vehicle of that type. We're not able to get, we weren't able to get an exact quote on multiple vehicles because Ford is where we would get a state contract. Um, and right now, explorers on state contract with Ford are complicated. So uh, there's supply issues, there was a recall, and so the, we may not be able to get a vehicle on state contract, so that number left us room to be able to go out for, get multiple quotes on vehicles from different companies like GMC, Chevy. Now you say you're gonna split this with Public Works, is that right? Uh, I, would, I would like to, I'd like it to benefit um, I'd like it to benefit Public Works and so, Scott in particular. But you put it under one department's uh, budget. You don't right. split the cost in the budget. Um, yeah, we would put it under here because I believe it's also part of um, part of the you know having a having a vehicle for community development primarily. So it's not in here, not in Scott. For vehicles. <laughs> I mean, Philip did. Philip and Scott have looked at vehicles. This is a no frills. Spot. I mean, it's not leather seats and heat seat warmers. This is a no frills Explorer type vehicle. I mean, that's just the cost of of those types of vehicles Great nowadays. Area. Yeah, I mean, yeah, they are. Um, that's that's the cost for a base, you know, vehicle that would be able to transport that number of people and. Uh, you know, be able to have space for, the other part of it is um, the equipment kind of associated with going out and doing inspections. We wanted to be able to have enough room in the back to put that equipment and then have it locked up in the back of the vehicle if we needed to. I know we bought three recently and none of them were that much. But of course, Billy's a Ford employee, retired. Right. So is that way that, that, Can you get us a deal? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> thinking that way because we do have friends and family and I'll note that this is the state contract price is much lower. Um, this this is the potential for having to buy a vehicle of that class outside of state contract because state contract may not be able we may not be able to get a vehicle on state contract. But state contract vehicles are usually about eight thousand dollars lower than this. Um, well, and keep in mind this is not what we're going to pay. This is, this is also um, council that when um, that we're having the same issue that the police are having. When you're buying vehicles on state contract, it's taking at least six months to get it. Um, <clears throat> for some reason, it's just, that's the way ve vehicles are right now. Uh, it's very hard to get them. If you look at dealerships, there's not a lot of cars out on the lots for the most part in a lot of dealerships. Um, cars are just hard, they're hard, having trouble getting them. And on the state contracts, um, it's taking six months at least in order, once we order a vehicle, it takes six months or more before we can get it. But with Billy, unless you work with him, that would be great. Yeah, no, this is this is a not to exceed amount. Our goal is to go much lower than this. Okay. Uh, we just wanted to make sure if we were to pursue that class of vehicle that we were able to try and get prices and, and find that. I understand uh, that you want a larger one, one that would carry more passengers. We just. Okay. Any other questions on planning and zoning? Now to the public library. Patty. Good morning. Um, this might kind of be a little strange to hear, but anything that I've increased is negotiable. <laughs> I'll take whatever y'all give me, so. <laughs> I, like, I like the way you put that. Um, you didn't need to sell used cars on the side. <laughs> but since we're talking about it, can I get a car for the library? <laughs> um, I really haven't increased much in the way of my services and supplies that I order. Um, I'm trying to look here. The only thing that um, under line item 52.2202, equipment repair and maintenance, I put $1,000 there because the building is 14 years old. Um, and the reason I put $1,000 is because I'm never really sure sometimes when I have to call 
for repair, something to be repaired. I never know if it's going to come out of the library budget or if it's out of facilities. Um, so it's sort of like I've had a couple of years where things have held up, but it's like a ticking time bomb. You just never know when something's going to go out. But um, I think the year before, I had $1,500. I think um, as of March 31st, I had only used $245 of that. So I sort of um, just asked for $1,000 in case there's something major that happens that um, isn't going to be covered by the public works budget. Um, other than that, I increased the rental of equipment and vehicles. That's line item 2320 by about $500. Um, I think we have one more year left on our big uh, public copier, which has gotten quite a workout. So that's to cover any expenses. I've never had a service call. So I don't anticipate that, but that would be to cover all of um, the supplies that, that go along with that, mainly just ordering the, the toners and um, the copies that we get charged for. Um, I had $100 in printing and, and uh, binding. Um, I haven't had any business cards in a couple of years, so that's I'm still using the old logo. So that's about out. So that's just to cover that. I have no idea what those charges are. Um, on line item 1005, special program supplies, I went from $4,000 to $5,000. Um, we're hoping to expand our programming to include programs for high schoolers and for adults, and that's just to cover any type of supplies that we might would need. Um, as you all know, I am two staff people short, and whoever uh, the person is that takes Cindy's place um, would be expanding our programs. So I'm hoping that um, we can put our toe out uh, and do a little bit more in the way of programming, not just for children in elementary school ages, but also middle, high school, and adult and seniors. So that's to cover any supplies that we may need there, depending on the programs that we offer. Let me, is the, let me, if I may ask a question, the person that's going to take, hopefully, that we hired to bring in for Cindy, is that going to be a full-time job? I hope that it is. Um, when Cindy would have a program, sometimes the rest of us would have to do certain things to help her out because of her availability in the hours that she worked. So I would like to lobby for that position to go full time. Isn't that what we it is in the budget for? that way. It is, OK. Yeah. Down, uh, I would go to the no the other way. Something I was going to ask. Put right there. Um, the what for the dues and fees? What does that cover? That seventy three fifty. That is what we pay to be part of Flint River and of Pines. That's what we pay. That is based on your, um, not your service area, but. It's based on the population of the town. And that has remained that same amount since, at least since we've opened the building. So that's it's been that way at least for 14 years, I can tell you. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Is that it? That's all I got. I didn't know if there was something under, but there is something. There, under. There's more. Oh, okay. But we've already. More for me? Well, he was just talking about under the Underneath supplies Underneath what, what we're looking at. Yeah. Oh, that's. No, I was just asking if there was more so that we he could see it. He needed me to but, scroll. Yeah. It was my polite 
passive aggressive <laughs> way of saying, Brandon, will you please scroll? <laughs> but he was, reading, he was reading my mind. Uh, all right. Got the drift. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, anybody have any other questions? Thank you. Um, I will be down there today, I hope, to get the picture taking, taken. Yay. Um, awesome. And I will use this as a plug for everybody to go down there, try to go down there today or sometime soon and get your picture taken. Thank you. I, it's I appreciate as simple that. as that, right? I mean, it's it as simple as that. Yes, and thanks to the people that have already uh, been down. Can you, can you tell us uh, what that's about for those, uh, anyone who doesn't? Um, well, this year's theme is Oceans of Possibilities. So um, we have like a photo booth down in the library. And what we're trying to do is uh, we want to have like a slideshow where we're showcasing that Tyrone has oceans of possibilities because we're all readers. Um, it's a way for us to let students and the general public and our patron uh, base know that we support reading and you all support reading. And it's just a way to have fun with um, this year's theme. So we would love it if anybody would want to come down and uh, have your picture taken, and we would create a slideshow. And uh, we would scroll that throughout the library and let everybody know who is who and that you support reading. I don't have to get in a swimsuit or anything. No. <laughs> no, now if we were doing a calendar, maybe. No but speedo. No. <laughs> <laughs> the expression on her face. Uh, Nobody wants to see that. <laughs> All right, is that all for library? That, that's all for library. <laughs> all right, thank, thank you. you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. All right, moving along to public safety. Uh, the chief is uh, a little under the weather, so he's out of here today. Um, of course, his, the biggest part of his budget, as always, is personnel. Uh, that's the way with all of us, but... Uh, he wanted me to highlight that the biggest, uh, his biz biggest requests this year are uh, two vehicles, and he's adding a uh, portable flock camera. If you remember, those are the license plate readers' cameras. We, we put, I believe, two in last year. This year he's requesting a portable, which is nice because he'll be able to put it, uh, easily put it where it's needed based on uh, you know, crime. So if we need it at the entrance to the industrial park for a while, we can put it there. If we need it downtown somewhere, we can move it. So those are uh, his two biggest uh, requests. Oh, the, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Uh, no, please. Go back, uh, Brandon. That last item, 100-30-2051-2900 um, other benefits, why did that go up so much? Eight hundred to twenty-five. Good question. It is. Let me scroll. I gotta find it. <laughs> While she's doing that, uh, on this is the flock, the portable flock camera. Is that still the same twenty-five hundred dollars? Yes, it's twenty-five hundred per year per unit. Right. Right. Okay. Thank you. Per per year. Per per year per unit. Yes. It's a. It's set up as a lease because there are, um, number one, if, if it gets hit by a car or stolen or whatever, it's they just replace it. Right. Um, if any components go bad, they replace it. But that 2500 covers uh, the unit, the software, the installation, and the uh, cellular service so that they can remotely gather the, the information. And is that under rental of equipment and vehicles? I believe it is. Um, that is actually something I probably need to move and I need to split that apart. Thank you for realizing that. Um, it's actually the gym memberships and the clothing allowance and the extra money that it takes for, um, well, we have to pay out holidays where they get extra pay because the, when like they normally work 85 hours a pay period every two weeks. It's, we pay them 93 hours every time there's a holiday. 
because they get an extra eight hours of pay. Right. Um, so I had I'd mixed that together this year, and I didn't realize it was going into the wrong place. So I'll have to split that into the right account. But the money is still going to be there. Is that good, Miss Lori? Sure. All right. Um, again, that was uh, you'll see his his uh, line item by line item has not changed much outside of the uh, the two items I told you about. Did increase fuel, obviously, by about over eleven thousand um, dollars. He did do that. Any other questions on public safety? Uh, public safety admin is just uh, this covers uh, the chief and Major Brock uh, and all of their costs. I forget. Or, remind me why they're that split out now. Um, it's because at the end of the year, I have to take what the auditors have done and I have to create, I have to split things apart for, um, the, for Georgia, for the Georgia Department of Accounts. And that's one of the things I have to split apart. It's easier if I have it as a separate um, department so that I don't have to do a whole lot more. I mean, I already have to do weeks worth of work. It just helps me so that that's something else I don't have to do. So that budget, uh, the main thing that increased in that budget is commensurate with the salary increases that have already been. All right. Other questions on public safety or public safety admin? <laughs> right on cue. <laughs> Elvis has left the building. Yeah. Does anybody need a, a, to pause to run to the restroom? I don't think we have to. Don't adjourn, please. Yeah. I don't think we can adjourn. Don't talk any business right now. Oh, he had a. After the dysfunction, it, it called. Scott, we are on public works. All right. Um, as you know, public works is one of the largest, if not the largest, budget. So um, we'll get through this as quickly as we can, try to hit the main things. Um, before we get too far into it, though, I wanted just to uh, reiterate what Brandon said earlier. Um, you'll see that there is a uh, graph in front of you that says uh, new and carryover costs. Um, this is a graphical method of kind of showing council the amount of money that we're talking about of things that are um, carryovers or things that may not actually get spent depending upon when other grants and things like that come in. So you see the Pendleton Dam and Castle, Castle Lake Dam um, 
those two projects equivalent to $2.5 million of the budget. Um, the paving carryover is for the contract that we're, um, we're getting to legal so that they can review and approve so we can start construction, but it probably will not be completed this FY, so we're carrying over the amount into next FY uh, to finish that, that project that's out. Um, carryover for the equipment is the chipper. Um, as you know, we've had a long wait for it. Um, got some good news yesterday that they believe it's actually shipped. Um, so hopefully we'll be getting it. Keep your fingers crossed and say prayers because we need it badly. Um, but in today's world, who knows <laughs> if we'll really get it or not. Um, the other two items are economic development items. Um, one of them deals with relocating the pole barn um, for uh, the ability to do stuff with that piece of property. Um, and also the, streets, the streetscape stuff um, there's two things in that. One is uh, doing an improvement in front of the um, Gunnan property along Sonoya Road of, of separating the lanes from the cart path um, and putting something there that's going to be attractive. And we wanted to also kind of show everybody this is where we're moving with our streetscaping uh, going through downtown. Um, and while we're just talking about streetscaping, I, I love the idea of using the LED type battery operated lights for right now because we don't want to put power in the ground at places that we're going to pull out when we go to do the streetscaping stuff so that's a great alternative to that um, lastly on the streetscaping are for the two entrance signs at the end of town on 74 um, one north and southbound uh, that's for the electrical to get those lit so what was the total on that 20,000 for that 150 for the Victor uh, gun in property that area that's I, I use that just to give you reference it's it's the street not their property but this okay. uh, castle lake dam we really we're, we're not really responsible for that um, no that that's gonna that's the pass-through amount that's the that's anticipating them getting that grant yeah. and so this is uh it affects our numbers but okay. our citizens are not on the hook for that amount all right and same thing with the pendleton dam you know, if we that grant comes through, we are on the hook for 25% of it, not 75% of it. Um, so that's one of the reasons why you, I wanted you to see some of that stuff. Some of this stuff is new stuff that we're trying to, to do with the streetscaping kind of stuff and economic development um, to the, you know, bigger projects. The carryover is just that. We're trying to do stuff we were doing this year that hasn't gone through for various reasons. And then the dam stuff is a lot of that is money that has to be in our budget because we have to pay for it, but we get money back for it. So it's kind of an inflated budget when you look that there's almost two and a half million dollars in there on, on two huge items like that. Okay, so that inflates the number at the end. So when you see the big number, the big sticker shock number on Public Works, keep in mind that you have almost a total of uh, $3.2 million that are either carryover Uh, reimbursable grant stuff and economic development stuff. Okay, so um, let's jump into the actual budget. Um, I don't think there's really anything in personnel that we need to talk about that hasn't already been talked about, except um, Brandon, I don't know if, if Councilwoman Fur was um, here to hear about the positions, if you want to update her on that. That's right. At the beginning, I, I highlighted that um, we had a last-minute request uh, from Public Works for the, uh, our two new employees to promote them this year from Maintenance Worker 1 to Maintenance Worker 2. So that had a, a little over $10,000 impact on the, on the budget. But um, I, I reiterated what Scott and Mitch have said about, uh, about them, that they, they're phenomenal workers, and we believe they, they definitely deserve it. Okay, with that said, um, technical services you saw a pretty decent increase in that. Um, 20,000 of that is for the culvert inspection services that we, um, once again, that's in going to, or has gone to legal for their review that we'll be starting up soon. Um, that's to keep us in um, compliance with the uh, stormwater regulations to keep our MSS, our MS4 and our local issuing authority and all that great stuff up to, up to speed. 
Um, the next kind of major one that actually is a really big one is the road paving. If you look at the two other pieces of paper I gave you today, um, one of them talks about paving by PCI, and the other one talks about paving by PCI location. So um, we have, you know, sh strived to, to take the lower PCIs and move those up um, to as far as our actual resurfacing projects. And the one that says paving by PCI shows you the, the order in just including the PCI. The color on the side is um, basically showing you areas of town that they're within. So you can see how there's like a couple things are lumping together, but you see there's some things that are spread way out. Um, so I started looking at the benefit of, um, of trying to combine, like take three years worth of, of road paving projects and combine them in area as well as PCI the benefit of that is that you don't have to mobilize the equipment um, several times. Uh, it reduces that, and then mobilizing equipment is very expensive. Um, so we don't want to get in the habit of just going, you know, one part of the town, another part of the town, another part of the town, where we can clump them together. So if you look at the next one, that's the paving by PCI and location, um, you'll see where we're focusing next year's, uh, the 22-23 budget, towards uh, repaving uh, basically Tyrone Acres subdivision. Uh, there is a, a railroad spur that um, goes off to the Mark Marietta, I believe it is, down there, and we're trying to make sure they have ownership to that spur and not CSX, but when we verify that, we're going to um, fix that because right now it has a track in there that's no longer used, it's been abandoned. So our goal is, and we believe that it is, but we just need to verify that to make sure that we don't pave over something we're not supposed to pave over. But that's one of the projects. And then um, we have some downtown roads that we're looking at paving, as you can see there. But you can see how they're more clumped together now. And it helps, <clears throat> like I said, it helps us kind of move everything into these, instead of a single year planning, like a two or three year planning. The reason why I went to the two or three year planning I actually did that last year. I don't know if y'all remember that in the um, budget retreat. We went through some of that, but we have 67 miles of paved road, uh, three miles of unpaved road. If you take out the roads that are available for um, a TIP grant with the county, you're down to uh, 57 miles of road. There's 10 miles that of road that actually meets the TIP requirements. They have to be a certain GDOT level um, to be eligible. Um, and then if you look at the concept of roads nowadays, cost about 300,000 a mile to um, mill and pave and patch and overlay. Uh, then you take that and you divide that by the 57 miles uh, and also keep in mind, or excuse me, multiply that, you get like one seventeen million million or whatever you divide it by the number of years that, that roads typically are good for. Ours is running into 15 to 20 before we are paving them. So middle of that is 17. It comes out to about a million dollars a year of what we would need to do in order to sustain a constant, try to get to them. I'm trying to take the, the wave of real high paving this year and then real low paving the next year and try to even that out a little bit. So each year we're not, we're not surging with money and then we're, got nothing the next year kind of thing. Um, so in trying to take that roller coaster ride, making it a more kitty ride than a, <laughs> than a major roller coaster ride, um, I'm trying to move towards that million dollars a year number. Uh, so you'll see the first um, year we're talking about 860,000. Uh, the second year it's showing 825,000. Uh, the next year it's uh, 1.1 million. So you can see how it's kind of, you know, even and out a little bit. And then the fourth year, I didn't really finish all that out uh, because by the time we get into a fourth year, we're going to be looking at getting new L, uh, PCI indexes and things like that, so it's going to change a little bit. But it just kind of gives you an idea of the, of the forethought and planning we're trying to do in, in moving these forward. So 
That's why you're seeing a, an increase in the paving. One, because you have the carryover of about 325,000 is in that. And the rest is because we're bumping up how much roads we're paving so we can get off the roller coaster ride and get on something that's a little more enjoyable. I ask you a question about uh, these, for example, the tire on acres paving. Yes, sir. Um, how long would you guess, if you don't know, how long would you guess? it's been and since those roads were paved? Um, that's a very good question. I tried to, I tried to find that, that answer out. And um, the best way for me to find that typically is just to go through historical images from Google Earth. And as I was exploring it, it was kind of hard to tell, but I know the road had been overlaid. So um, it appeared to me it was probably in that 15 to 20 range, getting closer to the 20. Um, it's kind of like, say, hard to tell exactly when it changes because uh, you don't have the the street, the streetscape ability at Boulder, you know, to look back and see, okay, is it flush with the curb or is it above the curb, you know, kind of thing. But, yeah, that's, that's all over that 15, 20 years. The reason I ask that question is if, if other neighborhoods ask to have their roads paved, it gives us some idea of how often a, a, a neighborhood is paved. And, of course, that's that one's not as as big as some other neighborhoods. Right. So it's um, it's always difficult to answer that question of when are y'all going to pave our roads? And um, it, it helps to have information, any kind of information, on other neighborhoods, other roads, other, other size of neighborhoods. So um, thanks. Yeah, I, and I appreciate you saying that, Mayor, because you're, you're absolutely right. It is a, the PCI gets you a starting point, and um, it's kind of hard sometimes to explain PCI to um, some of the to citizens because it's a complicated method. It's not, it's not a chemistry lab where you go in and you, you know, you can do this, this lab project, and the next person can come in and do that lab project, and they both get the same results. It's subjective in its evaluation. What's important is that when we do it, when we do it with a third party, um, I think that's important because it takes our emotions out of it, our feelings out of it, any, you know, any reason why we would want to weigh something higher or, or lower, all that's taken out. The people who come in and do this, they're third party. They have no connection to, to any of that. So everything is done based off of their pure evaluation on the condition of the road. Secondly, What's important is that you do it with the one company does all the roads at one time. So you're getting something that's relative to each other. It's not because the road got better. It's because the people who are evaluating it, the way they were subjective at, subjectively evaluating it, graded things a little different from what the other people did. But the, the truth in it is that it's all done by one company and one group. So you're getting consistent rankings that's sometimes very hard, difficult to explain. Um, but then there's a whole bunch of other things, as you know, that go into this over time. You know, the wear, the amount of vehicle on the uh, truck traffic is huge on it. All those kind of things weigh into this. So we do look at the, the age. We're trying to get uh, a feel for the age of when everything was paid. We're trying to get some tracking on that um, because that's also going to help us see that roller coaster because when you have a big subdivision, um, I'll take Southampton or Rivercrest or one of your states or one of the real, you know, the bigger ones. When they come through, they have a lot more roads than other neighborhoods. So we're going off of PCI and location to grade things. So we will pave roads in their neighborhoods as they meet those levels. Um, I'll tell you, the county does it differently, but the county has the, the budget, I think, to handle this more than we do. They will go in and they'll pave like a whole neighborhood, but they wait till the whole neighborhood PCI number comes down. So you could have some, you know, roads that were much lower than the PCI. So we're trying not to do that. Um, it's just a different philosophy. I'm not saying they're wrong and we're right. It's just I think this is a better fit for us uh, because we can't handle paving, you know, three miles of road for one neighborhood one year and then paving seven or eight miles of road the next year. That's that's that roller coaster ride again. All right. And then for the magic question. Okay. Can we safely 
stay to Southampton. You will have your roads paved, or you will have at least these three roads paved in the 25-26 fiscal year? Or do we just say, um, as it stands right now, you are scheduled to get these three roads paved in 25-26? Yeah, I would prefer the latter. Um, and I really wouldn't want to reach out to year four. I would, I would rather say, this is the roads for 2023. We're anticipating the following roads for 23-24 and the following roads for 24-25. Which is why you wrote for internal use only. Yes, sir. <laughs> That's okay. But so we could talk about the, we'll, you know, we'll be more than glad to sit down with, you know, with anybody that in HOA or whoever wants to come talk to us about this kind of stuff and show them um, where they are on the PCI list and stuff like that. And we're talking about doing um, maybe a Citizens Academy kind of thing, which I can talk about that. So if we do a Citizens Academy kind of thing, this this would be one of the things we would definitely talk about when it comes to public works and show them these numbers and stuff. So, uh, all right. Thank you. Yep. So that's I the big one. If, I apologize if I said words that I didn't need to say. No, in public. no, sir. No, we're good. Everything's fine. So, They're out. We're, yeah. we're transparent. <laughs> so the um, next big line item. Thank you. Uh, is going to be, well, I'll talk about sidewalks. The sidewalks, um, we're not doing any real change in our amounts much this year, um, but we've done the same thing. You see my color-coded chart here. You'll, we do the same thing that we're doing with roads. We've gone through, we've identified the neighborhoods and um, done some rough, rough uh, numbers on them, but we're trying to take that out to that uh, roller coaster on that. And when we get these three next year is done, we'll, we'll be doing really well on our sidewalks. So uh, we'll be able to start focusing on some other things like the crosswalks and the um, accessibility, those kind of issues and stuff that um, that arise over the next three years. Okay, so stormwater um, and upon maintenance, this is the next big one. Um, we increased uh, flushing costs um, this is an anticipation of just increases in the uh, cost of doing business now because those companies, you know, they bring out water, gas, you know, truck, fuel, all that kind of stuff. Um, along with that, we're looking at doing um, more. Uh, we wanted enough in there so that we can really start tackling our some of these pipes that we need to flush. Um, you will see also in um, a later budget that a piece of equipment that we would like to get that would uh, actually allow us to do some of these ourselves. Um, so we'll talk about that later. Um, and that if we do that, it might help offset some of that cost. Uh, the next thing, though, is the culvert and structure, um, the replacement line items. I, I don't know exactly how it's worded on yours. Uh, well, it's not. You're under stormwater still. I'm sorry. So. Uh, with the last couple years, um, we've had a like a hundred thousand dollar budget, if I remember correctly, and we're bumping that up because we need to start getting more aggressive on some of our stormwater stuff. We're finishing out our fifth year of inspections by December of this year, um, so with that, we'll have a you know a really good feel for priorities. Um, we do have some priorities that we've set up for my three years of roads. We're going to look at those and make sure we're tackling anything that needs to be done in those because we don't want to put a, put a road down and then two years later dig it up and put a pipe in. So we're trying to you know do this in, or, in logical order so we're not compromising the structural integrity of the roads after we do the projects um, and make them look bad because we cut them, you know. So anyway, that's where that stands. And um, we have a list of um, so we got a close to about 30 
pipes that we've identified um, as higher priority. And out of those um, 300,000, it's only 10,000 a piece. That's not going to get all 30 of them done, but we're going to take this list and we're going to start hammering away at it uh, because we need to do that. So that's a major increase there. Um, also, also that one. That's it for that. Castle Lake Dam, we talked about that. That's a, the pass through one of 465,000. Um, other stuff is minor, you know, like our, our example, our uniforms went up because we, you know, have two new employees. And um, small equipment, our signage. Signage went up a little bit. Uh, we're trying to, uh, we're working with one of the HOAs on getting some of their signage improved. Um, so it's a large subdivision, um, Southampton, and we will be providing them signage for their signs. Uh, we provide them the regulatory signs and the street blades because they their posts are actually owned by the HOA. They're not our standard post. So we provide the signage to them to make sure the signage meets the regulations and they install them. So that's what we're working with on them. But it's, um, you can just, you know how many signs are in Southampton. <laughs> it's a lot. So we had a, a little increase there. Um, talked about the $20,000 for the entrance signs going into the town at the north and south of 74. Uh, twenty thousand dollars for that, and the hundred fifty thousand for the gun and streetscape. Um, Pendleton Dam. We talked about that. So the last thing that's really um, oh, the pole barn is new. The you know that we talked about earlier. That's in there also. And then the equipment is the last real big ticket item. Hopefully, the thirty five thousand that's in there for the chipper. Um, we may not have in the budget come this FY because hopefully it'll be here. Uh, we had uh, the skid steer mayor that you brought up with the gyro track boom. We talked a lot about that. We still feel like it's an important piece of equipment for our arsenal and we would like to get that. Um, in particularly it, with the mulcher head because that allows us to clear some things that are harder for us to clear on sides of roads and things like that. Um, and having it tracked versus using our other vehicle that is rubber tire, it's less um, chance that it's going to ruin the tires and things like that. And uh, so there's just some advantages to that for a tracked vehicle. Uh, can I explain that to council, please? Sure. Um, I just had lunch one day with the public works guys and just asked them, you know, what did they not have that they wish they did? And that was the only piece of equipment that they mentioned. So I asked Scott if he agreed that that was a need. And essentially, instead of having a, I, I don't know how to speak the language, you just did, but having a bobcat or what'd you call it? Skid, Skid steer. steer with tires, it has uh, tracks. So that's, that's where that came from. Yeah, and it, it's a good piece of equipment for us. Um, it will be used a lot, I can promise you that. It also has the safety glass in it that's needed for the, the mulching head. So, um, and we can get it with the hydraulics that will give us a good mulching head on it. Um, that was part of the problem. We were originally were looking at a mulching head to go on the boom of the um, Mini X. The problem with that is that, first off, they're heavy, so you're limited with your reach on your boom that you don't reach too far and, you know, kind of thing. Um, the second thing was that the hydraulics on the Mini X um, were not going to support anything bigger than about three feet. So this will give us, you know, a more like four to six foot, probably more like a four foot uh, mulching head capability on it. So, um, and the weight of the uh, skid steer with the tracks, you'll still be able to transport that on the new trailer that you had purchased a few years ago. Correct. Okay, good. Um, the grade blade was the something we talked about at the retreat. Basically, that gives a multi-hitch um, that allows you to rotate the blade multiple directions. Gives us 
the ability to have our blading more like a motor grader and less like a just a straight blade. Um, talk about the chipper and the golf cart uh, for this fourteen thousand. That was the replacement for Hanley. That um, the one that was thrown, excuse me, stolen from, yeah, from Hanley Park. Um, we still see value in that for uh, events, for collecting garbage along streets, roads, um, parks, things like that. We also uh, see it being used for signage stuff where we can take it, especially if it's signage along the golf cart paths, where we can use that vehicle on that. Um, and the nice thing about that is you can say, oh, well, you know, you can drive the truck on the golf cart path. Well, you know, the truck weighs more than, than the golf cart. So <laughs> it's less wear and tear on our, our path system. So it adds some benefit to us that we felt was important. And uh, that's why you see that that number has jumped up a good bit. And I think that's it for public works, unless you want to talk about something else. <coughs> oh, wait, no, no. Is that all our capital? Yeah, that's everything. Any questions? Um, where do we ha have we made? Have we made arrangements for the new lighting along Sonoya Road there by the overpass? Yes, sir. I'm working on that right now. Um, I got a call into EMC. I'm waiting for them to call back to get that started. I need to find out how long it's going to take them to do that. It's not a it's not a large price, so I will just cover it in next FY. I'm not going to try to put it in next FY's budget because I'm hoping to get it done this year. But even if I don't, it's a small enough item that we'll find a way to make that happen. Very good. Thank you for that. I just want to mention, since we're talking about public works, that it is, I want to recognize that it is public works week. So if you all run into any of our public works guys, just uh, you know, recognize that. And we're working on uh, doing lunch with them at some point this week as well. Very nice. All right. Uh, Scott, Thanks, do you Johnson. want to do the capital improvement or do you want to go to the funds like sewer? Um, let's do sewer, I guess, next. All right. No fancy charts and graphs for sewer. So. <laughs> Just a mess. What can I say? All right. Um, big ticket items with sewer. Um, so with sewer, we also increased our jetting and camera services uh, this year. It's under technical services. Um, we've had more uh, more issues with being asked about, you know, is our line, is your line blocking my line, and blah, blah, blah. Um, and typically it's not. Uh, in fact, I've yet to find one where we've been the blockage, which is a good thing. But you expect that because you have a small pipe coming into a big pipe. It's blockage is normally in the small pipe, not the large pipe. Otherwise, how did it get in the large pipe, right? <laughs> so, um, but anyway, that said, we are moving forward with uh, putting a little cushion in there. Um, it wasn't a huge ad, uh, but it's um, enterprise fund. Keep that in mind, too. And we'll use it as we need it. Um, and later when I talk to you about the jetting piece of equipment, I'll let you know that I still want to keep that in my line item for if the jetting is in a deep manhole that we can't enter. We, we won't enter any manholes with the, with the equipment that we're going to use. Um, we will use that for things that we can get the jetter into without going in it, basically. Okay, so um, let's see what else is major in here. The really big one with the sewer. Um, basically, when you get down to the maintenance and repair, um, we have money that we put aside for improving the quality of our system and ma through maintenance. You know, um, every six months we provide Fulton County with an I and I report, 
is an infiltration and inflow. Um, basically, inflows where the water comes like from the surface and goes into a manhole or um, a sewer cap is missing on a clean out and it's in the parking lot and water's going into it, those kind of things. And infiltration is where water from the ground is seeping through cracks in a manhole or cracks in a pipe, those kind of things. So um, we added, what was it, 300,000? I'm sorry, I'm losing it here on my plane. Like I'm missing a page here. Oh, there it is. Yeah, so we added. Um, Sandy, help me out here a little bit. Was it the infrastructure we added for the sewer line item that covered the manholes? Right, so. It's under the uh, 2212 number. Hold on, Scott. Let me get caught up to you there. Uh, yes, it was. That's the correct number. Right. Okay. What line item is it? 2212. Oh, that's what we're already on. Okay. Right. So in the 2212 number, you see there's a, a large number, 430,000. Um, the repair to a manhole in Southampton subdivision is one of the items that will fall under that that's currently under design. Um, there, the red zone information that we have on our sewer pipes, we're still um, reviewing stuff on that and getting things prioritized, but we'll start tackling those lines and we'll get a project together out to um, probably line some lines this year. They take a uh, Basically, it's like a sock, and they push it through the line, and they push steam into it, and they bypass the line, obviously, so that there's no sewer going down it. They, they steam that polyurethane that's in that sock, and it makes a pipe inside the pipe, and it seals all the holes. Then they have a robot that comes back that they ran in before they did that to measure everything, but they'll send a robot in that will go in and will actually cut the holes back for all the surfaces. Um, so... This kind of stuff is done normally in a day or two per line, depending upon, you know, the line, how long it is, and things like that. It's a great thing because you don't have to dig anything up, but it does cause sometimes road closures. Sometimes if the road's large enough, you can close just half a lane. Um, but those are the kind of things that we're going to be looking at when we identify, you know, which pipes we need to go after. Um, um, but that's not cheap, obviously, but it's cheaper and less um, – obtrusive to the area when you can do it all in the ground without having to dig it up. Less time consuming. Yes. Yeah, the actual construction time is short. It's more the reviewing, evaluating, putting the plans and specs together, knitting it out, and all that's where, you know, like the most projects, that's the majority of it. The actual construction doesn't take take as long. But um, And no land acquisition in this, so that's a good thing. Because <laughs> we Thank all God. know that takes time. <laughs> That takes lots of time. Um, but speaking of land acquisition, too, I'm talking earlier this morning with a council member. Um, and the point was brought up about tackling um, land acquisition as early as we can in a project. I just wanted to make everybody aware that we are trying to do that. Uh, certain projects, you got to get a project to a certain point where you know this is what you're doing before you go start running after land acquisition because you don't want to do a land acquisition and then find out you need more because you didn't realize you were going to have to cut the bank in that piece of property more or you were going to have to extend something out into their property a little bit farther. Um, so when, as soon as we reach those points where we feel comfortable with that and you all have seen the plans and said, yeah, we're comfortable with the location and things like um, a good example is going to be the roundabout because that's the next big one coming up. Um, we, will, we will hit those land acquisitions as quickly as we can when the time comes about to do that. We know we're, we're, we're set in stone with where we're going to be. So, okay. Um, any questions on sewer? You're still going through with the pumping stations, relining those. That's all part of your program. Um, we actually, the pump stations, uh, I'm not relining any this year. Um, 
I'm tackling some stuff with the um, hydrogen sulfide buildup. Um, anaerobic decomposition sometimes can accelerate or does accelerate that. Um, and we have uh, one man, one pump station that is underutilized right now um, because there just hasn't been enough tie-in to it yet to get it, you know, get it to a point. So it's only running two times a day per pump, which is means the sewer sitting there for a while getting stagnant. So they have aerators that you can put in to help keep things stirred up. Um, it also helps um, any grease in it from actually coagulating. Kind of helps keep it separated when you pump it and stuff. So uh, that is in the budget to do two of those. I'm looking at pump station five, which is the, the pump station I'm referring to. And pump station one, which is where pump station five goes to. And that's also where the Avaca product is being um, put in. So my goal is to to do those two, see if we can get those down, see if we can get the Avaqua number cut down. And if this is really successful, um, implement it in other places as, uh, as needed or as safety, you know, as a precaution if we think we're getting close to numbers. Because as long as we keep the numbers down, we shouldn't have that, uh, that corrosive uh, deterioration of the metal inside it in the concrete. Um, so it's a it's a different way of solving the problem of lining it, um, but if this doesn't work, then yes, we'll start looking at going back to the line it. But we want to try to give this low cost ticket item a, a shot because um, it, it it solves some it reduces the evacuate. You know what I'm saying? There's there's Thank multiple you. multiple things it's going to help us with, um, and Coweta County has uh, installed a couple now. Um, the first pump station they put it in. Within 24 hours, the foam and grease and all those smells and stuff are gone. It's 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 just a biological process um, that we're controlling. Thank you for that. Sure. Okay. Any questions on that? All right. All right. Do we want to go next, Scott? CIP. Um. Yeah, you're gonna help me with that one, right? I hope. <laughs> It's a big one. Yeah. Um, and, and a lot of the CIP is tied to SPLOST. Um, so just remember that, and we'll go over SPLOST in a minute as well. That might that might be a better idea. Thank you, Sammy. Go to SPLOST first? Okay. All right, let's do SPLOST first. Let me find it here. Okay. So okay. we are anticipating revenues this year of 1.7 million in SPLOST. Um, we are just a few hundred thousand under at this point what the total SPLOST was anticipated to be, which is around $9 million. Um, we will have collected all of that money well ahead of the end of the year, which is the end of this current SPLOST collection period. So we're on track to actually have revenues higher than anticipated for SPLOST that we can, you know, turn around and put back into projects. That con confuses me because I thought the SPLOST as it was passed gives you a cap or a term, whichever comes first. We talked about that with the attorneys. And Correct. Um, I, I specifically asked, I have read through the stuff and I did not see it that way. And I asked um, Dennis, our attorney, and he's the one that actually wrote up the IGA for everybody, and he's actually the one that wrote up the um, what people voted on. And it, he said that we still should have the money coming in through the end of the sixth year, which is the end of next year, next fiscal year. Now, now what you have in front of you is what is anticipated. I mean, not what's anticipated, but what was planned. So we'll work with those numbers for now. And, and also, just just as a reminder, this is SPLOST. We can only use the money on the projects that was that was voted on. Mm -hmm. So um, we do have projects out there. The roundabout we went from a mini roundabout to a large roundabout that that increased the costs exponentially. Um, so at this point, we didn't think we would have enough um, SPLOST money coming in because we're going to get extra money. We probably will be able to go on ahead and hopefully pay for the rest of that out of SPLOST money. 
Um, we have Elmig money that is in Splost, so uh, there's always Elmig paving road, you know, paving the roads that we can use Splost money for. We have projects that are on the Splost list that we can still pay more towards. But. Uh, so 1.7 million in anticipated Splost revenues this year, funds carried forward. Uh, what we've already collected, 2.5 for a total revenue of $4.2 million. Side, uh, we have uh, 2,000 for legal fees, uh, $138,000 for road paving and repair. Again, those are uh, part, parts of the, uh, the tip and all that. Um, 84,458 for gateway signage and streetscapes. So the plan there is uh, number one, we want to uh, take all the downtown, the signs for all of our buildings downtown, Shamrock Park, um, the museum, the library, Veterans Park, all those signs are dated and, and they, they just look rough. They need to be up, upgraded. They need to have our new logo. Um, the, the museum is gonna, you know, it's, that sign needs to be, that's a temporary sign. So all of that's included in that, as well as some other uh, streetscape improvements and, and things of that nature. So all that's been included in here. I'll note that um, of all, we've also, the town's applied for a grant to potentially assist with some of those things. I applied for, it's interestingly enough, AARP puts out a lot of grants for community development. And so we applied for, uh, I think it was $40,000 grant from <clears throat> AARP for that. We'll see if we get it. but. Um, just as a note, we've applied for grant monies for that purpose. Okay. 263645 for facility renovations. And again, uh, the lion's share of that is uh, improvements at uh, 881, the museum. Uh, the restrooms no are most notable in that. Um, Scott has a plan to reconfigure. Do you remember that hallway that the restrooms are on right behind where Town Hall was? Um, you have a male, a male and female restrooms. You have the utility room that had uh, the water heater and the, all that in there. There's a door coming off of the old copy room and there's a door coming off the breezeway. Uh, the way it's going to be reconfigured is there's going to be two unisex restrooms. Uh, one, you will enter from the museum side. You come down the ramp and you come, come into that door and it's one restroom uh, that, you know, only the people from the museum side will have access to. The door to the utility room will still be in there, but it'll be locked, of course. And then on the back side of that, coming through the old copy room, will be a unisex restroom for what we hope will be the recreations offices. So I'll have that restroom and the restroom that was between mine and the mayor's old office in there. So that's that's a chunk of that. And then, of course, we're, we're looking at hopefully, uh, like I say, cosmetics, flooring, paint, things of that nature. I miss anything in that line item? No, that's good. Okay. One thing, uh, yeah, the museum, I don't think has missed. Near the front of the um, building, water must be coming in somewhere. I don't know if it's from the water. I don't know. Maybe the roof, I don't know. But anyway, um, pictures that we've had on the wall on both sides are getting mold on the back of the pictures. Okay. Well, we'll take note of that and get that looked at pretty quickly. Um, okay. Good to know. Very good to know. Okay. Um, remind me, somebody, please, what the 19000 is for vehicles. Was that uh, police? Police equipment. Yeah. yeah, equipping police vehicles. Um, there was a, I think the, the total splice was 150000 or something like that for police vehicles. So it's kind of a, an ongoing amount. So 19000 this year for equipping police vehicles. 500000 on cart paths. Um, again, we, we hope, I mean, the, uh, I'm sorry, Tyrone Road is not included in that. That's a different uh, line item. Uh, 232000 for culverts. Uh, the, the roundabout. For uh, Palmetto, Spencer, and Arrowwood is, is uh, just over a million. Uh, 282,000 is still slated for Hanley Park. Uh, a lot of that's going to be the finalizing the restroom building and seeing that come to fruition. 
And then $350,000 for uh, the Red Wine Park improvements. I sent you all yesterday a, a draft uh, that you'll be voting on this week. So um, it's, a, it's a good start, I believe. So it's accurate to say 500000 is all we have budgeted for our cart path system for the entire year? No. That's just out of SPLOST. Okay. There, there's money in the general fund for, like, the, the Tyrone Road expansion and, and, and all. Well, all right, separate ty uh, Tyrone Road. Okay. So, so that I, I'm looking for my talking points. Take out Tyrone Road okay. and then say – X amount of dollars, we have X amount of dollars budgeted for the entire year for the entire system. Go into the CIP yeah. app to see that. Oh, let's see. Oh, I'm in the SPLOS CIP. All right, cart paths. We have. Pardon? Cart paths for public works is 200,000, 23, 24. No, you're, t you're looking at um, repair and maintenance. Been. We're talking tr real, we're talking building cart paths. Is that what you're talking, sir? Yes, ma'am. You're looking at the wrong thing, Scott. So we have 500000 in this year in the CIP. I'll highlight it right here for the SPLOS cart pad, which is Sonoan, Spencer, and Swanson. Um, we're kind of backing off the thought of doing a uh, cart path along uh, Spencer because, again, it's, that could be easily be a, a share of the road area where we shouldn't have to spend a, a lot of money on that. But the uh, Swanson Road uh, is another one where we're looking at, rather than actually extend the cart path down the length of the road, doing road improvements, and then do a tie-in from Swanson Road through Hanley Park so we could get people just a short distance from the three subdivisions back there up to Hanley, then they cut through Hanley Park, and they get on to Hanley Road, and then they, they're on the cart path system. And I think I'm seeing that the answer to my question is about $750,000. Yes. That's okay. I'll explain to you why I'm asking that question later. And also included in that, the roundabout for Spencer, um, it has included in the roundabout dollars a cart path extension from Arrowwood to um, Southampton at, um, I forgot the street connection there, w Winfield. So included in that, there's a cart path project kind of bundled into that roundabout as well, and that connects Southampton to downtown. Okay. Uh, debt service, we've got uh, $1.3 million from SPLOST in that, and that is for uh, GTIP. GTIB loans that we've had in the past for uh, road improvements. And that pays off that loan. That's your total $4.2 million for SPLOST outlay. Further questions on that? We look forward to getting more of these projects done. Uh, I know a lot of people are anticipating uh, park improvements and the uh, the, the path improvements or at least transportation improvements, let's put it that way. So uh, having those done. All right, uh, moving on to go back to the CIP. So we've already covered cart paths. We've covered the uh, roundabout. Come down to Sonoa and Castlewood. I believe that is a traffic study. Is that That's correct? Right. That's correct. Yeah, so a traffic study at Sonoma and Castlewood. Uh, we have the chipper in here, of course. We've already talked about that. We've talked about the skid steer at 77000 uh, All of this, Scott, has already covered, but it's just laid out line item by line item in the, in the CIP. Public Works pole barn uh, relocation or uh, new facility. 
Um, Pendleton Trail Trail Culvert, that is a SPLOS project at 232,000. Pendleton Dam, we've talked about that uh, a lot. Uh, sewer capacity, so we're, one, one of our uses of, of, of the nearly $3 million in ARPA funding that we're getting is uh, what I would like to see us do is take a million of that and put it towards sewer capacity. Um, we've also talked about taking another million from the uh, sewer enterprise fund to put with it. Uh, the cost of sewer, as you can imagine, the capacity has gone up uh, exponentially since the last time we bought capacity. Uh, we still have to have meetings with Fairburn to see where we're going to land with them on the 250,000 gallons that we have with them. Um, our anticipation is to either keep it with them or uh, have them buy it back from us and then let's turn around and buy that capacity and hopefully more from Fulton County. The problem is it's about a million dollars per 100,000 gallons now. So uh, Fulton County has not been... Uh, extremely responsive to our discussions and our requests. So uh, I think, I hope what they're holding out on is that we finalize our conversations with Fairburn, which the mayor started up recently and um, so that we can figure out where we're gonna land there and then we can go from there. Um, so anyway, that's what that million dollars is for uh, out of the sewer fund. And then when I come back to you with our ARPA budget later, you're probably gonna see another million dollars in there. So that would get us another couple hundred thousand gallons. I would love to see uh, us at a million gallons. That would give us plenty of room for growth for the next 15 to 20 years, I would anticipate. Where are we at now? We're at 650, and if you, if you look at the numbers <clears throat> and the projections, we're at a little over, Scott reminds 60 something percent of that capacity, nearing 70. Somewhere in that range, yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah, we're at 650. Uh, so, you know, like I said, I'd like to see us get to you know, get a lot close to a million. Um, but it's, uh, it's a difficult, difficult uh, thing. And it's, it's literally one of the things that uh, I say keeps me up at night. But I certainly, I certainly uh, it's something that's on my mind a lot because we have a lot of developers coming in. And, and you know, they're kicking tires at the moment. But eventually some of this is going to stick and we're going to start seeing developments come in that are going to need, you know, 10, 15, 20,000 gallons a day. And I'm afraid we're going to get to a point where we got great opportunities for development come in and we're going to have to turn them down because of sewer. So those are some of the things that we're, we're looking at. And, uh, uh, we hope to see, uh, some, uh, progress on at least figuring out where we're going to land uh, pretty soon. So, I think you're absolutely right. We've got to start planning on the infrastructure for that upper corridor on 74 in order to bring more businesses in. And uh, that's certainly the first thing we're going to have to do. Exactly. So it's definitely a, a big consideration for us. Okay, uh, moving on. Scott's already covered the cameras and uh, jetters. Um, there's a $67,100 um, expense in here for converting pump station two from uh, propane to natural gas? No, that is sixty. That is replacing pump station number two generator. Okay, my bad. It, the yeah, way it's written in two here, it looks... There. The natural gas one is a smaller item for um, the one in Rivercrest. Okay, well, we need to make sure that wording... Okay. It, cause it looks like a conversion kit. I didn't understand that. What makes Gil you think that? <laughs> <laughs> Scott, afterwards, so. can you please get with me so yep. that we can correct this yep. terminology? Okay. Thank you. All right. Uh, Seventy-one five for a jet trailer, uh, Seventeen six for the aerators that Scott mentioned. And then moving down to recreation, we've already covered these. 282 for Hanley and 350 for uh, Redwine. $150,000 for that playground at Shamrock that we've already ordered. Got the patrol vehicles covered. We've talked about that. Uh, 92938 for non-splossed patrol vehicles. And that, that cost, I believe, is all-encompassing. It's the vehicles and the equipment. How many did that include? Two. Two. Yeah. They, are, they have gone up a lot in the last couple of years, for sure. Um, 
$15,000 for replacement of broken equipment. Got the 263, 645 for 881. We've already talked about the vehicle for planning and zoning. Uh, the $35,000 budget software for uh, finance. And then community development, GTIB payoffs, payments, uh, I'm sorry, debt service, and then all your streetscape improvements. Also included in this is the uh, our principal and interest payment for the year on the building. Any, any questions on CIP? I'll just add to that, Brandon, because um, it really is a separate budget. It's a tree fund budget. Um, but that's also on this year as the trees for site improvement as part of the streetscaping. So that's where that's coming from. Okay. All right. Okay, let's move on to confiscated assets on the federal side for PD. Um, let's see, we're at that $9,500 is the uh, total on the revenue side. And they have 8,000, excuse me, $8,000 in here for uniforms. And uh, well, I guess that's all he budgeted for that for, so 8,000 for uniforms from uh, Federal confiscated assets, and let me go to state for you real quick. The uniforms are um, primarily for uh, the armored vest replacements. So the state confiscated assets is at eighty-eight thirty-six seventy-nine, and he has sixty-five hundred dollars in here for small equipment. I don't have a list of what that anticipated need is, but it, it may just be. If it was replacement equipment yeah, as needed. Computers and things of that nature. So um, that's your state confiscated assets. Um, let's go back to, I guess we can move on to Founders Day. Almost done. And Rebecca, if you want to handle that one. <clears throat> Again, our budget is the only raises that you'll see is um, to cover the rate of inflation and to cover any areas where we were getting close to being over budget so that we don't end up in that um, that over budget zone. Um, sorry, my brain is fried. Um, so we also um, are trying to do more for Founders Day. So we have in our special program supplies, I believe if you'll go down. We've also up since you're right there. We've also upped our uh, legal fees, our legal services, because since we're bringing in more, we're trying to bring in rides and things of that nature. We need to go through legal to make sure because these are things that require more contracts than we're used to. So we want to make sure that we're fully covered um, with special program supplies, as you can see, um, or excuse me, our new line item is special program services. And this will cover things such as bands, the zip line, any rides we bring in. That's a, this is a new line item that uh, Sandy created for us, and we'll be using that going forward. And going down to special program supplies, where since we have the new um, services line, we are going to keep our budget at 5000 because before, all of our bands, all of that that wasn't covered by sponsorships was coming straight out of special program supplies. So to make it better on and more clear on the budgeting side, we're using special program services, which will be, like I said, bands, rides, DJ, anything like that. And if you'll go up to our overtime, I believe that one's at the very top. So with that one, um, as you see, we've updated a little bit just because we have more, we have a bigger need for our employees, especially public works, PD. Um, we noticed that especially since we no longer have Deaton's Field here to park and we're ferrying people back and forth from Hanley. We needed traffic control to help the buses get turned around as well as traffic control helping people cross the street because the last thing we need is somebody getting run over. Other than that, um, those are the only increases that we really have. Um, we're really excited about uh, this year's Founders Day. Our next meeting, if y'all want to attend, is next Tuesday in the library at 530. Okay, did you put in fireworks this year? 
We have already talked to um, one of our sponsorships, and that was what they, they completely covered it last year. Okay, so I don't need it in here. Oh, no, ma'am. That was my <laughs> yeah, No, ma'am. Define technical services, just so I understand. Uh, the special program services. That is technical, no, services. technical services. 1300 right here. It was right under legal. It's very similar. Um, I believe you could do, do a little bit better of the technicality because when we did special program services, what we wanted to do was separate out our bands and um, really technical services would be people running our rides and things like that. Um, like, you know how we had our escape room and we had to pay um, the two oh. folks to work the escape room from that company? Um, it's so things that's like essentially that. vendor, vendors. Exactly. Okay. Anybody that requires, if, am I right, Sandy? I believe I'm right. About the lights that we were talking about one time. Those. So we price those out. The trailers are about $15,000 a piece. And so what we're looking at this year is actually adding. We're going to have EMC come out and look at the field down there and give us a diagram of um, basically we're looking at putting three light poles on either side of the, the field. And so long term, yeah, really long term, you're going to pay about the same. But we're gonna, what we're looking at are just basically six lights that we can control with a switch. So for these events, like especially when it gets late and you need to turn lights on, you just turn the lights on, they light up the whole field, and then we can turn them off. And it's just a small, kind of like with the street lights we're adding, it's just a small monthly fee mm -hmm. versus a 15000 or $30,000 expense for something that we'll use some. I still think that it's, it's worth looking at down the road to buy one for the town because Public Works would use it. PD could use it, um, you know, it, we could definitely get some use out of it, but we kind of landed there just because we have, we're starting to increase our events and programming at the park, and I thought, well, why not just do a more permanent solution, and we can kind of daylight the park when we need to, so. And as I discussed with Brandon before, this will be very helpful since we're starting to move into more evening events. This will cut down on technical services because that is renting our, um, trailer lights and things like that, that'll cut down a lot on that budget. Anyone else? Okay. Thank, Thank y'all very much. All right. Uh, hotel motel tax. Um, we're still putting, I'm still putting this together. This is a, this is quite an endeavor that uh, we've, we've never done before. It's a brand new uh, ordinance for us. We don't have hotels or motels, but what we do have are short-term rentals. Um, and it is a process because back July of 2020, I believe, or 2021, state of Georgia passed a law requiring uh, uh, marketplace uh, vendors such as uh, VRBO and Airbnb to collect excise tax on behalf of the owner or the host and remit that to local government. And so uh, it sounds nice, but the problem is none of these companies have a place on their website or otherwise where you can find a, you know, a contact at the company to say, hey, Tyrone now collects an excise tax. It's 3%. Here's where you remit it to. So basically what happens is we register our ordinance with the Department of Community Affairs they have an online repository of, of all the, all the uh, cities and entities in the state that collect this tax and what that tax is and what our contact information is. And Airbnb, VRBO, all these places, they go on there and they find that information and they say, okay, Tyrone's on here now, so we need to start sending them checks. The other side of that is that our ordinance requires each uh, host to register with the town pay a fee, they have to meet certain requirements. Um, and, and that's multifaceted because we haven't yet passed the short-term rental ordinance, which has another layer of, of work that they have to do. So um, long story short, uh, we're anticipating a very small amount of revenue on this, but um, you know we, we had to get started somewhere. And so we are laying the groundwork to collect these excise taxes. Um, what's probably gonna happen is uh, 
you know, we'll collect a small amount. We anticipate somewhere around $5,000. Um, I did the figures, and, and if, if you took every room that I could find for rent in Tyrone or every Airbnb or VRBO, every one that I could find, it was about 16. And if you took what they charge per night uh, and you had 365 days of rentals times the 3% act, you know, fee, if that scenario were to occur, we would only collect about twenty thousand, twenty-five thousand dollars. So, um, so that's why we've anticipated such a low revenue. Does this tax have anything to do with, uh, like, renting out space to movie to movie film? No, though that uh, no, that that's different. Um, you know, the town if it's a if it's a town facility, we charge a fee for that. If it's a if they just come to somebody's house in town and rent the house, then um, there's no there's no tax on that or no we're not involved in that at all. Um, so anyhow, we we anticipate five thousand dollars there, um, and spending that back out on technical technical services. Um, on that, so it's just more of a pass through, and it's a brand new thing for us. So. Um, Hopefully we'll have it uh, everything squared away by this time next year. All right, uh, Scott mentioned the tree fund. That kind of sounds crazy, but we do have a tree fund. We are anticipating a twenty thousand dollar contribution this year. Uh, Scott, can you elaborate more on where that's coming from? Let me let Devin do that because okay, he Devin. handles that. Okay. Well, uh, basically, fund that Devin. You need to come. Oh, yeah. He can't hear you otherwise. <laughs> so uh, what tree fund is, is if people can't meet our landscaping or tree density requirements because they have a special really tight site, they can, to an extent, compensate for that with a donation to the town's tree fund. There's an ordinance calculation and everything for how that can be done. Uh, but essentially... Um, the 20,000 is meant to be generous if we have some big projects coming in. I do know that we have at least another 30,000 coming in, but it's gonna depend on what the developers wanna do. Um, but yeah, we, we got some donation to the tree fund this year. Uh, Catherine helped me in adding a tree fund category into community core for when we need that. So we're just collecting those funds and making sure that if people are not putting in all the trees that are required to by the ordinance, that they make the appropriate donation to the tree fund. Very much. Uh, we have funds carried forward of fifteen thousand one ninety four for total revenue estimate of thirty five one ninety four, um, and then we are anticipating thirty five one ninety four going back out for site improvements. And part of this is, you know, street trees, things like that that we would love to see downtown. All right, I think we have covered all the all the budget. Well, we got fire impact fee. I'm sorry. Uh, this is so twenty thousand dollars anticipated, and that goes back to the county. Construction. Let me double check and make sure we have covered. So ARPA, as I said, we have not put anything in the ARPA right now, other than our um, our uh, revenue. Uh, we had 1.4 million last year, and we anticipate 1.4 million in the next several weeks. Uh, and uh, we will be coming back to you with with uh, a budget for that later. Did I miss anything, staff? All right. So that is our uh, budget proposal. Um, I, I want to thank staff for working so hard on this. This is the, this is the probably the uh, the most difficult time of year for for all of us is getting all this together and communicating and uh, meeting and and, and uh, Sandy and Bridget especially. Um, they probably each need a week off after uh, <laughs> after budget time, but they not only I mean you know so you know they they work hard. They got all these numbers coming at them from department heads and they're meeting with all of us. And then it doesn't end there. Once the budget starts, they have to close out the last year and then they got they got that and then starting the new year and then they start with uh, 
shortly thereafter audits and reports to the state. So a lot of moving parts. Thank you all very much. I know this is a very time consuming and uh, technically um, draining uh, time of year. So um, thank you all very much. Thank you, staff. Um, and again, it's a, it's, a, it's a large budget, but I think we've laid out, you know, why it's that large, and uh, we hope we can, we can work with it. And, but, uh, Council, do y'all have any comments? I'm sorry, I was a little late. Trying to make it. Can we forgive you? Yep. No, no, Absolutely. No need to be forgiven. Completely oh. understood. <laughs> uh, I have two things. One, I'm reminded this morning of just how good you guys are. Everybody has such a good grasp on their subject matter for their department, whether it's technical knowledge that we don't understand. We try to know what you're talking about when you're using words that we don't understand. <laughs> uh, um, or, or, yeah. Anaerobic or, decomposition? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, yeah. What, or just, you know, your day-to-day -day work. But you guys really know your stuff. You're not stumped by questions that we ask or flustered by questions that we ask. And um, you were ready. Uh, so thank you so much. And, and Bridget and, and Sandy, thank you for knowing each category of everybody else. So great job. We, we, uh, we appreciate you. Um, the second thing is my, my new part-time job, which is called uh, Crab Apple Lane. <laughs> um, I, just, I just got an email during the meeting of another neighborhood that's uh, asking for an update on our plan, which uh, Peachtree City has apparently uh, uh, mandated for us. Um, but uh, tonight they're having their council meeting because they moved it from Thursday to tonight. Uh, this topic is on the agenda for tonight. And uh, uh, I think we are at a place where we're at least going to get it delayed. Uh, but I'll be going to um, speak to them. And any two of you are welcome to join me. Um, Kevin? Mm -hmm. uh, if y'all have any questions about that, I'm happy to answer now or off. Um, to the mayor's point, uh, I can't thank you guys enough for what you do, but even your efficiency and knowing all your thing, it's the attitude that you come with it. <laughs> Everybody do, has a great attitude, and they, they really have their hearts in it, and we, we truly appreciate everything you guys do, from Brandon all the way down, and thank you all. Thank you, sir. Hey, uh, oh, without objection, I will entertain a motion. To adjourn. I make a motion that we adjourn. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed?